To know geography means to understand different landforms and regions. This program will give background information and show the location of important landforms and regions. When you're finished, you'll be able to say you know a lot about what geography is really all about. Geography is literally under your feet. The study of geography involves knowing where you are, where you're going, and how to get there, if for no other reason than to find your way back home. For most of you, geography really begins at home. When you were little, your world was very close to home. As you got older and went off to school, you had your first real lesson in geography. How to find your way home from school. Gradually, you extended the range of your adventures to the next street, the next town, and then from one town to another. Geography begins with finding out where you live. Even if you haven't traveled beyond a limited area, you've made visits out into the world and beyond through books, films, and television. Here at Marina Middle School among the survivors, it is this. Television brings the another. entire they world into your home. Pete, this town of 40,000 is about... Uh, but sometimes that can be confusing. You would expect the damage to be Where are the all these places the they're always talking panic. about? When you see shots from New York or Los Angeles and Hollywood, when you see reports from Europe, Asia, and the Middle East, when you see news from all over the world, you want to know where all these varied locations are. Using a globe will help you to find them. But pictures can tell you a lot too. In fact, there are so many clues in pictures that you can all become geography detectives. You can learn a lot about the world by understanding what you're seeing. You already know a lot about where places are. Let's read some clues and find out about your home in the world. First, you're surrounded by sand. It's very hot, and the air is dry. There's no water or vegetation, and you feel hot. Where are you? Right, a desert. Perhaps in the Kalahari in South Africa, the Gobi in Mongolia and China, or the Atacama in South America. The largest desert region in the world extends from the Sahara through Iran to Afghanistan and Asia. In fact, one-fifth of the world is desert. Europe is the only continent without a desert. Or maybe you're in the American West, Utah, Arizona, New Mexico or Texas, or northern Mexico. Deserts are regions with little water and vegetation. Some people consider Siberia a desert. There's little vegetation. There is water, but it's frozen. Now you look around, and all you see is snow, miles of it. Where are you? You could be in the Rocky Mountains, or the Alps, maybe even the Himalayas, the highest mountain range in the world. Or it might be winter in the northern United States, Canada, northern Europe, Russia, Korea, or Tierra del Fuego, the southern tip of South America. What if we told you this snowy area was over an ocean? Where would you be? 
Actually, you'd be on the North Pole, where the ice is two to three miles thick. The ocean you are over is the Arctic Ocean. The South Pole is icy like the North Pole, but it is over land, not water. The only creatures that live here are smaller than gnats. Now you're in a place where the sun shines directly down at noon, making it very hot. It never snows here, but it rains a lot, and sometimes there are dry seasons and a thick forest. Where do you think you are? You're in the tropics, and this is a tropical rainforest. It is in a zone that circles the earth like a belt at its center. There are more kinds of trees here than there are anywhere else. And more species of birds, insects, reptiles, and mammals live here than live anywhere on earth. The high canopy of the rainforest keeps sunlight off the ground. If sunlight does get in, a jungle undergrowth develops. On the northern edges of the tropics are tall grasslands called savannas. There's a lot less rain here. In Africa, most of the world's big game lives in the savannas between the tropical rainforest and the desert. There are savannas in the Sudan, below the Sahara Desert. Two other savannas are the Campos in Brazil and the Veldt in South Africa. Some even classify the prairie of the American West and the steppes of Central Europe as savannas or grassland regions. Do you see this globe? It's tilted, just like the Earth. It's because of this angle of the Earth that there are four seasons in the temperate zones. The Earth is tilted towards the sun during June in the United States, and in December, it's tilted away from the sun. But if you went to Argentina or Chile at the end of South America during our summer, you'd be in for a surprise. It's winter there. When the northern hemisphere is tilted toward the sun, the southern hemisphere is tilted away from it. In the temperate zones, there are two types of trees. Deciduous, which are broadleaf trees that lose their leaves in the fall, and evergreen trees that keep their leaves all year long. Evergreens tend to predominate as you get closer to the polar ice caps. Of course, when it gets really cold, there are no trees at all. Say it's the middle of summer in the United States and you're surrounded by snow. Where are you? You could be on top of a high mountain since altitude affects the weather too. Mountains are an important land formation. Mount Everest in Nepal is 29,028 feet tall, the highest mountain on earth. And the air here is so thin, you need oxygen to breathe. Most mountains are part of large mountain ranges, like the Rockies in the western United States, and the Appalachian Mountains in the east. Mountains make their own weather. They also affect their regions. The deserts in the American West are caused partly by high mountains that block rain clouds. Mountains also channel development. 
Before California could be settled, pioneers from the east had to find a trail through the mountains. The land takes many shapes and forms. As you've seen, landforms are an important part of your world. They can even define your lifestyle. The world also consists of many regions, and the more you know about them, the better you will understand geography. For example, when you look for the United States on a globe, where do you look? Where is it in relation to the major regions of the world? Regions are large areas or land masses. They often include large sections of similar climate, geology, and culture. The word geography is from the Greek for a description of the earth. It looks at where you live and links where you live to the rest of the earth. Every country and every continent has its own geography, which shapes the character of the people. They may be farmers, as in the American Midwest, or fishermen, like those who work off the coast of Maine. Maybe they work in mining, like the coal workers of Pennsylvania. Or industrial workers in Detroit, Michigan. Maybe they're craftsmen in Mexico. Vineyard workers in France. of people spread over millions of square miles. Yet, if we all gathered in one place at one time, we wouldn't even fill the Grand Canyon. The earth is immense, and humanity, like a mighty river, shapes the land and is shaped by it. The destiny of humanity is tied up with the earth. So, geography isn't just about maps. It's also about people. It frames the story of humanity as it is found on seven continental land masses. These continents are North America, which is cold in the north and warm in the south and is bordered by the Atlantic, Pacific, and Arctic Oceans. South America, which is warm in the north and cool in the south and is bordered by the Atlantic and Pacific. Europe, which has a temperate climate that's cold in the north and warm in the south and is bordered by the Atlantic Ocean and the Mediterranean Sea. Some consider Europe and Asia as part of one giant land mass called Eurasia. There's Africa, which is hot in the north and cool in the south, and has nations on the Mediterranean Sea, the Indian Ocean, and the Atlantic. Asia, which is cool in the north and warm in the south. Australia, vast, empty, and majestic, has a warm climate. Since Australia is a continent, not an island, Greenland, a province of Denmark near the North Pole, is actually the world's largest island. And finally, Antarctica, the coldest place on Earth. It is the land mass that contains the South Pole.
By understanding different landforms and the different regions of the world, you can begin to understand why there is so much variety in the world. You might even understand why people would travel from other countries just to see where you live. When you study geography, variety is what you come to expect. 